Good afternoon, everybody. Joe from NDB Aviation, and today it's going to be the third and final video where I review and discuss the Honeycomb Aeronautical Bravo Throttle Quadrant. And today's video is really going to focus in on why I believe that the Bravo and X Plane 11 are a near perfect combination for flight simulation, training, and educational purposes. So, if your whole goal is just to have fun in flight simulation, you're not concerned about adding a good amount of realism and customization into your overall setup, then what I suggest is you probably look towards Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. And if you can afford and wait for the Bravo, I would say you are not making a mistake by purchasing the Bravo and waiting for it. But if you would prefer to spend less money, there are a lot of other options out there for you. So, without further ado, let me get into the reasoning why I believe this is a nearly perfect combination, the Bravo and X-Plane 11. So, like I said, this is the third video of three, the final one where I'm really going to discuss the Bravo Throttle Quadrant in a sense of reviewing it and saying why it's so good. Today's video, let's recap before we run into the combination of the Bravo and X-Plane 11. In the previous videos, I did an in-depth review of the Bravo Throttle Quadrant itself, how it worked within Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, X-Plane 11, but that was several months ago now. Things have changed. We've moved on. We have new software editions of both X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. Things are maturing. But let's recap the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. What sets it apart? First off, the Bravo Throttle Quadrant has a ton of customization. It comes with the commercial setup and it comes with the GA setup. So if you're somebody that's only interested in flying, say, an LSA aircraft, a light sport aircraft, or single engine GA aircraft, or you're just gonna stay in the prop world, you're not gonna go over to the jets, you have a lot of options here and customizability to go up to at least two engines of a complex aircraft with the Bravo Throttle Quadrant. But say, hey, you wanna have fun with everything the world has to offer, well, the great thing about the Bravo is you're not limited to just a prop setup. You have the ability to take all the GA pieces off and put on what's behind me right now, which is the commercial setup. It has thrust reversers built in. The whole axis system is set up for initiating reverse or having a zone that you push the throttles into to go into beta or reverse, depending on what aircraft you're flying. And it has a lot of customizability to at least mimic the throttle that you have in your aircraft as long as it is a lever action like this instead of a push pull like that TPM behind me from Sagtech years ago. You have a lot of customizability here. You have the axes that you can then assign to spoilers, flaps. You have a throttle tensioner on the side which is really good to use because the aircraft you might fly might have a certain friction to it when you're pushing and pulling the throttles or moving the levers to make it do what you want. Then you have a pitch trim, which is great. Now, I know in the first video I discussed how the pitch trim had some issues, some idiosyncrasies or simisms in the past. It seems that those are getting better. And with the software add-on for Prepare 3D and X-Plane 11, you can kind of hone that in to be a little bit more to what you want. As far as a Sobo and Microsoft License 2020, that's still coming along, but it has gotten better over the last several months. It's maturing well. So the pitch trim is great. The gear lever is a great addition as well. You know, if you had a regular throttle quadrant, you'd be buying a separate piece to add that in, just like you see my legacy SciTech products over there now, sold by Logitech. You'd have to buy the autopilot panel or the switch panel, switch panel, to actually get the gear lever, and then you would need the autopilot panel for the flap switch, which is already included here. Then, on top of that, you have all the assignable switches that you can use for lights, APU, GPUs, switching over electrical systems. You know, it's kind of this limitless amount of customizability that's only limited to the number of switches that you have, which you have a few. And if you have the Alpha or some other yoke that has a lot of other switches with it, you have another form of customization to add realism to your flight sim experience. And then on top of that, you have the coup de gras. Well, you have two things that really take this over the top. You have the enunciator panel and you have your autopilot panel. Two things of which that if you have limited real estate 
on your PC monitor or your TV and you just want mostly an external view, you're able to get a good amount of information with the enunciator panel to know when things are going wrong and then you have your autopilot panel right there so that's taking away several mouse clicks that you'd be doing otherwise with your mouse and looking in in the 3D cockpit and trying to find everything which isn't a bad thing don't get me wrong if you're going for realism you should know where all those things are in the cockpit but you are able to cut down on the amount of time you're using one of these to click assign and set up things now given I know it doesn't do the FMS that's something that maybe Honeycomb will add on later on that would be really awesome I know there are some other companies that make some versions of FMS externally that you can plug in but as for right now with Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 I don't think there are that many that are actually working I'm sure there's something along the way and somebody's working on it right now but right now for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 that's not there for X-Plane 11 there are a lot of things that you can tie in that work really well and I think from what I've heard there are some rumors the rumor mill is churning always but there will be a lot of things to add on to this in the future that will help you take your flight sim experience to another level so the Bravo is exceptionally customizable it adds realism to your flight sim experience but then let's talk about build quality this this is still recapping from previous videos the build quality of the Bravo throttle quadrant is above that of what I normally see with consumer grade flight sim peripherals Behind me, I still have my TPM. I still have my old SciTech uh, throttle quadrants. And those over the years have had some trouble. I've had to clean them. I've looked into greasing them, even changing out the, the pots, the potentioners inside there, because they get kind of wonky. Uh, you know, depending on where you are in the world, there might be a better term for this. If you have some, some suggestions for something just not working right, I would love to hear your region-specific versions for that, because I always like to expand my vocabulary. But I digress. The build quality of the Bravo Throttle Quadrant is beyond that of almost every other consumer grade product I've seen. I have not had a chance to get my hands on a yoke of the Alpha Yoke yet, but I've seen people have had it. I've actually seen one in person. Have I been able to use it myself yet? No, so I don't know the build quality there, but if it's anything like this, this meets pretty much everything I would expect to see for something going into a BATD or an AATD. And those are certified flight simulators that you can log training time in and currency in once you are a certified pilot. And from what I've heard, and some pictures I've seen, that's most likely going to be FAA certified to be used within, or at least it will have the stamp of approval from the FAA to be used as part of a BATD and an AATD, which is no slim feat. It means it's a quality enough product to be used for certified flight simulation and training. So you are not wasting your money by buying one of these and you're definitely not wasting your time waiting for it because it's going to be a quality product that you're going to have for years to come, especially as the software gets better and better on the Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 side and X-Plane 11, especially with what comes next, add-in software. So behind the camera, I've got my screen up. And right now we have software to make the lights work in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. There's also one for FSX, the old flight sim for Microsoft. Then there's X-Plane 11, both Windows and Mac, which is huge, which is another reason why I like X-Plane 11. You cover both ends of the computer spectrum, PC and Mac. I'm not gonna say which one you should buy. That's up to you, the user. But you also have software for Prepare 3D version 5, 4, and 3, which covers a huge spectrum of that flight simulator, which is also another great flight simulator. However, I just don't have the time to review it. And I'm sorry, guys, that are huge Prepare 3D fans, but that's where this still stands. So you have all this software to then fine tune the enunciator panel, the axes, the switches, the autopilot functions. All these things come together to allow you to add realism to your flight sim experience, which is, if you're buying this, at least in my, my neck of the woods, you know, I fly for a regional airline, I'm a flight instructor, I look at this as the training potential of saving you money in the long run to not spend so much time with your flight instructor. And also to knock off the cobwebs if you are already a certified pilot, IFR certified, or all the way up to professional pilot flying, or maybe you're out due to, say, the pandemic, or a medical issue, or you're taking time off to be with family and work another job until you can come back to the airlines, whatever it might be, 
you have now a product that can tie in so many features into a smaller footprint to allow you to then really work away in X-Plane 11 or Prepare 3D and practice procedures, practice arrivals going from point A to point B. And if you want to, you can throw in failures of systems. And within X-Plane 11, those systems are pretty well modeled where Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is still kind of playing catch up. It's, it's moving down the line and eventually it will be there. And with the mods from the community, it's getting better every day, which is great. I love that, but it's still not there yet. So with all those things I just recap from the previous videos, the Bravo holds a great amount of value where you're not throwing your money away here because it's going to be something you're going to keep for years to come. If you're a flight student that's starting from zero time, you were going from zero to hero, or you're just a serious simmer, you have something that will allow you to jump into almost any cockpit of any aircraft ever made, albeit it probably needs to be two engines, propeller max, or four engines, jet max. Uh, I expect, I, I haven't really pick the brain of the folks that I know over at Honeycomb yet to see if there are going to be some additional pieces that you can put on top to maybe go up to a six engine aircraft or more like I'm thinking B-52 you know that that's that's gonna be more than that can really handle so if you're flying something like a B-52 the good old buff or maybe say you're flying a good old Herc or some other aircraft that has four engines or more and has multiple controls for all those engines you're still going to need to look at something like the old Logitech throttle quadrants and you could actually tie those in together and kind of daisy chain those. So you could take two of those, one of these, and you could fly those big old aircraft. It's just the throttles are going to not match up perfectly. So it's really up to you what you really want to do there. But the value of the Bravo throttle quadrant far exceeds anything else on the market. Because if you look over there, you can kind of see just slightly out of frame. I got the old Cytec Cessna yoke. I've got my switch panel, the instrument panel, and the autopilot panel. All those together are more than the Bravo throttle quadrant. And even if you can get them, and I know it's hard to get the Bravo, if you can get all those, it's still adding up to be more than what you really want to pay. So the Bravo holds a great amount of value. So you are, I know it's, it's $250, depending on where you are in the world, it might be more due to taxes and currency exchange rates and all that. But the Bravo is going to be your best bet moving forward for serious simulation or flight training purposes, whatever it might be from zero time to somebody that's just trying to keep current mentally. It is your best value to go to for anything out there. So we've recapped the Bravo, why I've done now three videos over it. So let's step into why does the Bravo and X-Plane come together to make a nearly perfect simulation experience? Well, Glym thinks so. Uh, let's see, I think there are several other manufacturers of uh, BATs and AATs that think that X-Plane 11, X-Plane 10 were by far some of the best flight simulation software suites to set up a certified simulator in. But then you throw the value of this, the customizability of it, the build quality of the Bravo, and together, you have something that now you can do what I referred to earlier. You can do procedures. You can do a SID, a star. You can do so many things in between. You can even set up a second panel with X-Plane 11 and you can set up everywhere you want to be on a map, anywhere in the world, whether it's on an ILS, somewhere on the arrival, anywhere else. And then you can set up all your failures that you want to work through and then practice all those things with a good amount of fidelity that Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is lacking. And from what I remember, you couldn't do that. You can do that with Prepare 3D. It's just been a long time since I've done it. So, well, almost a decade since I've done training with Prepare 3D. X-Plane 11, I've done personal training myself with X-Plane 11 the last several months. And over the last several years, I've done flight instruction with X-Plane 11. With several different BATDs and AATDs that I have had the, the at least joy and access to for teaching students with. So X-Plane 11 gives you a turnkey solution or at least a software solution that is already FAA certified. And if you are a serious simmer, if you are a serious pilot, it is a large ecosystem that is mature at this point that you can get in there and you can be a zero time pilot. You can take all that rote knowledge that now you need to apply and then transition 
to maybe not really working on muscle memory yet because that's going to be specific to the aircraft you're flying, whether it's a Skyhawk, whether it's an LSA, a Piper Cherokee, an Arrow, a Seminole, a Diamond DA-40, DA-20, DA-42, DA-62, and you know, it goes on and on and on. Um, you have the ability to start that training with X-Plane 11 and you have the ability to really get into the systems. You know, you can create a scenario of detonation in X-Plane 11. You can create a scenario where you've 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 written too much or you've leaned too much and it's causing a problem with the engine just like what I just referred to. Or you can work with the prop, the manifold pressure. You can create problems that create stresses in the air, in the actual engine. You can work with the avionics suites, then you can expect them to do what they were designed to do in real life. So X-Plane 11 gives you a really good ability to do all that training that you were expecting to do and you know achieve a goal. That with the Bravo Throttle Quadrant gives you the best combination right now to actually perform all those tasks. So let that sink in while I take a sip of coffee here. The Bravo and X-Plane 11 are your best bet moving forward to enjoy serious simulation and train. And I'm not going to say that Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 isn't going to be there, because in time it will. Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 will catch up. It's starting to already. From the community mods to all the third-party developers. However, one thing I've seen from some of the third-party developers, they make beautiful models, but they're still lacking in systems. And it's it's going to be one of those things of what do you want to take away from your flight simming? Are you here? Are you flight simming for the purpose of becoming a better pilot? Or is this something joyous that you're trying to just enjoy and do a bucket list like item and kind of get a taste for aviation before maybe you go out there and do a discovery flight or you start flight training lessons? You know, the world's your oyster here. You have your choice of flight sim software from Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 to X-Plane 11 and Prepare 3D version 5 or newer. So there are a lot of things out there that you can do to really maximize your flight sim experience, but what I'm going to say here again is the combination of the Bravo Throttle Quadrant and X-Plane 11 is by far your best bet and near perfection as of January, uh, February 2021 of really getting the most out of flight simming. So if you have questions, comments, concerns about what I've said here, Leave them down below. My goal is not to be a viral video maker. My goal is to help people get to where they want to be in their aviation training, whether it's zero time, whether you're already a pilot, or say you're stepping away from aviation, you're coming back to aviation, or say it's now time for your retirement. You're done. You've been flying the big jets for years. Thank you for your service flying. You know, I'd love to hear some stories sometime. I hope to make my stories sometime. You know, I'm still at the regional working my way up. But I want to make sure I'm helping people find their way to maximize their time, their money, and their joy in aviation and flight simulation training. And if you're just in this for the fun of it, you don't care about learning anything about aviation, I still want to help you too. I want you to have a quality product and quality time with your simulator that you know, you might just be having fun, but at the same time, you're going to learn something. So, Joe from NDB Aviation, thank you for your time. Thank you for your patience watching my videos. And like I've said before, if you can wait for the Bravo, if you can afford the Bravo Throttle Quadrant, it's your best bet. Thanks, everyone. Take care. See you again real soon. Bye-bye.